So class ten, as you know that yesterday we were doing this of custard dragon, and in this poem we have read about the young girl whose name was Belinda, and she had four different pets. So she other two pets were quite good natured, but while she had a very you can say different kind of uh, you can say uh, feeling for his dragon. Whom she thought that he was uh, that uh, custard dragon, or he was quite uh, curd in nature. So what happened one day that a pirate came and he has come in order to make attack Belinda at Belinda's house and uh, other animals. What happened that they they ran ran back to their cages to their dwelling places. So now here it goes. I'm reading from here the stanza. Mr. Is in his left hand. So now, here it is. Pistol in his left hand. Let me move the mic. The voice is not so clear. So, pistol in his left hand, pistol in his right, and he held in his teeth a cutlass, bright. So, as I told you that he was holding a pistol in both his hands. There was a pistol in his right hand. There was a pistol in his left hand, and moreover. Uh, moreover, he was holding a cutlass. Cutlass means bright, shiny sword. He was holding a cutlass in his bright, shiny teeth, and his beard was black. One leg was wood. So this is the important thing to note here that one of his leg was made up of wood. It means that it was not the original one. He had black beard, and his one leg was made up of wood. It was clear that the pirate meant no good. and of course it was also clear that the pirate had not come with any kind of good intention okay so belinda paled and she cried help help so naturally this is the time when belinda would get afraid of the situation and she was crying help help but mustard fled mustard ran away With a terrified yelp. Okay, so he ran away with the you can say terrified yelp means with afraid as well as well as immediate you can say noise as well as jump away to his place. Ink trickled down to the bottom of the household and ink. Okay, where it has gone and who was ink? Ink was the name of the little black kitten. Where it has gone? It has gone to the bottom of the household to the remote corner of the household where it could not be found. And little mouse blink strategically mouse hold and the this you can say mouse we blink whose name was blink where it has gone it has gone to his hole but but up jumped custard snorting like an engine so then came the turn of whose that is custard dragon so then came the turn of custard snorting like an engine he was shouting like an engine. in order to produce this effect okay like an engine you know there is a comparison that how he was snorting he was snorting like an engine so like an engine what is this this is of course an example of simile other the other literary devices poetic devices i'm going to discuss after the reading of the poem next yes so clashed his tail like irons in a dungeon now clashed his tail he was moving his tail in this manner like in a dark cell he is you can say clanking the irons iron means swords okay again like the irons again underline this that it is an example of simile tail like irons clash tail like irons this is of course an example of simile right next with the clatter and the clank clatter and clank means sounds produced and the jangling squirm squirm is moving round jangling means this is the sound which is produced when he is moving round and round and he went at the pirate like a robin at a worm okay again like a robin at a worm this is of course robin at a worm like a robin at a worm this is of course an example of simile 
So why this is an example of simile? Because like word is used here, like robin bird. It attacks on a worm. In the similar manner, what happened that uh, the so-called cod custard it attacked over the pilot. It means it was not any other animal, but it was of course the custard who has come up with his you can say guts. and ultimately he has attacked the pirate the pirate gave it belinda's dragon now gate means he was with mouth wide open he was looking at custard that how brave he is and gulped some grog from his pocket flagon grog is some kind of wine or some liquid some wine or some liquid from his flagon it is glass bottle it is glass box bottle in order to get energy so what he has done he drank some grog from his why from his glass bottle from his flagon and he fired two bullets but they didn't hit so in order to kill the cast in order to kill caster what he did he fired two bullets but luckily it did not hit him and caster gobbled him every bit so what did custard custard attacked at him and ultimately ate every bit of this you can say pirate he ate gobbled him up ate him up now belinda embraced him mustard licked him now belinda was very happy that he has killed the pirate so she embraced him took him in her arms mustard licked him mustard was licking okay the dog and no one mourned for his pirate victim but no one was feeling sorry that the pirate was dead ink and blink in glee did gyrate in glee means in happiness gyrate means taking move rounds around him they were in happiness taking rounds around him and around the dragon that ate the pirate they gyrate means that they are moving round and round around the custard dragon as he had eaten the pirate but presently up spoke little dog mustard now see now what happened when something is not done by a person what he would come out he would definitely come out with the excuses see what excuses they have come up with but presently up spoke little dog mustard what he has said i have had i had have been twice as brave if i hadn't been flustered he said i would have behaved more you can say i would have behaved more you can say brave if i don't get flustered means if i don't get nervous at that time because i got nervous at that time i did not know what to do and it is just because of this reason that i did not fight with the pirate so and up spoke in and up spoke blink we had have been three times as brave as we think and custard said i quite agree that everybody is braver than me so this is again the quality of custard that he agreed that yeah that yes of course everyone is braver than me so what he said he said yes and now even that blink said he said if i would have been at this place i would have behaved three times braver than we people actually think and finally custard admitted in a very humble manner yes i think that everyone is braver than me but the thing is that the person who acts on the situation is the real hero and it is of course the custard who is meekly understanding and and adjusting to the situation now belinda still lives in her little white house with her little black kitten and her little gray mouse and her little yellow dog and her little red wagon and her really a truly a little pet dragon so ultimately he again the same paragraph first paragraph is repeated here then blinda is afterwards living happily ever after with the little black kitten the little gray mouse and her little yellow dog and she of course had that wagon and of course that dragon also so the last line of this stanza it is really a truly truly okay really a truly okay it is little pet dragon it is little pet dragon so this is an example really truly this is an example of tautology this is a force of poetic device used here tautology so what is tautology so sometimes we say it's really true sometimes
and we say it's absolutely perfect. Okay, so now here in order to describe, we are using two adjectives at the same time having the same meaning. Okay, means in the same line. Okay, when two words are used here, which are conveying the same meaning. Here, really, truly means really, truly. They are conveying the same meaning and they are used simultaneously in a line. So this is of course an example of tautology, right? So what is tautology? When the same words they are used again in a line to convey the same meaning, this is of course what it is an example of tautology. Okay. Suppose uh, we simply say it brought joy and cheer for me. What is joy and cheer? It is but obvious one and the same thing that they both hold the same meaning, joy and cheer. So when two words are used simultaneously in a line and they are conveying the same meaning, so this is what? This is of course an example of tautology, right? So next is Belinda is as brave as a barrel full of beers. And ink and blink chase loins down the stairs. Mustard is as brave as a tiger in a rage, but custard keeps crying for a nice safe cage. Again, the same first paragraph. It is repeated here. Okay. So yes, there is of course the use of onomatopoeia in this point. Okay, onomatopoeia where it is used. Onomatopoeia means sometimes the word used is particularly related to a particular thing or animal. Onomatopoeia. For example, knock at knock. What does knock? Knock means that something is at the door. Knock is related with that. Okay. Ringing of the ringing. Ringing means it is of course ringing of the bell. Now here, what are the examples? It is you can say we wake, and then there is example of clatter, clank, jangling, clatter. Clank, jangly. Okay, so what are these? These are all the examples of onomatopoeia used here. And in the very first paragraph, there is, there is, you can say, use of zoomorphism. What is zoomorphism? Zoomorphism. There is use of zoo. Morphism. So, what is zoomorphism? Zoomorphism means when animal like qualities given to given to human beings. For example, simplest one, my brother eats like a horse. My brother eats like a horse. So here in this case, means how your brother eats like an animal. So animal quality is given to that of your brother. So what is this? This is an example of zoomorphism. So now coming to this point, that how in this poem it is used, you can see here, Here, in, it's like human-like qualities to animals. It's in context to this point, human-like qualities to animals. Human-like qualities, for example, see here in first and second stanza, it is mentioned, white black kitten, little gray mouse qualities are given like that of human beings. And in the second paragraph, little gray mouse, she called him grim, uh, bling, little yellow dog means it, human like qualities are given and it is of course mentioned that custard is of course finding a nice safe cage. Okay, so these are examples of zoomorphism here. And one another poetic device used here is neuto. What is a neuto? These, this must be the first time you are listening to this word in neuter. Okay, so sometimes 
you make a very mild statement for a person okay but it is of course appreciative in nature but indirectly what it suggests that someone has done someone or some someone has done something which is improper which is immoral okay or something which is plain at surface but actually but actually it it involves a rude or some rude or some you can say particular sarcastic remark for example in hindi we used to say na wo to jalebi jaisa seedha hai so at the plain surface it doesn't seem a comment it seems like an appreciation okay but deeply inside what it is it holds a very you can say insulting remark that he is very clever similarly here in this chapter for custard dragon what is written mustard was as brave as a tiger in a race but custard cried for a nice safe cage okay custard tried custard tried for a nice safe cage so what it means what it means that it is always demanding a safer place to live it is not at all happy with the other kind of work that is going on what the other animals are doing he always wants to be separate than the others right so now i hope that the poem is clear to you if you people have any doubt just raise up your hands yes one more thing i want to uh, tell you here is there is use of anaphora also anaphora anaphora means when the same lines or same words or phrases they are repeated in the you can say in uh, consecutive paras so see in first and second para um uh, that's last two lines and the little yellow dog and little red wagon and really really little pet dragon again in second paragraph these two lines are repeated at the end and little yellow dog was as sharp as mustard and the dragon was a coward okay means little yellow dog little black kitten little grey mouse is used again and again so this is example of anaphora okay first and second stanza and samely in the last two stanzas also anaphora is used here that's it that's clear now students any doubt that's fine now if you have any doubt you can raise up your hand otherwise i'll take that you have understood it very well okay so that's fine so now yes raghav yes raghav i have unmuted you Yes, Raghav, your voice is not audible. Your voice is not audible. Ma'am, uh, anomoto fee ka kahan pe use hua hai? Ek baar dobara batana. What? Ma'am, anomoto fee ya? Anomoto fee. Yes, ma'am. I speak of the word knock. Knock immediately in our mind comes a word that it is told. If it is ring, ring means ringing of a bell. Some words are associated particularly with objects. For example, for snake, I always give the example. His is associated with snake. What is this? His means snake. Some words are particularly associated with some animals or some things. So this is an example of anomatopoeia. Okay, so here clang. Mummy, use काम पे हुआ? Use, it is used in this poem. See the line. These words are used. See here this paragraph. See here. Mm, see here. Clatter, clang, jangling. What are these? These are examples of anomatopoeia. Okay. Fine. Yes, ma'am. Clear? Okay, right. So now. Fine. Yes, ma'am. Okay, fine. Now. uh let us come up to thinking about the poem the first question is so what lesson we have learned out of this poem i told you that of course it is a uh, of course it is a 
story it is a poem which is contains a story with the moral so this is the reason why it is called as a ballad right now next afterwards coming up to the question answers that what lesson we have learned out of this ballad that appearances are deceptive in nature and even i believe this appearances are always deceptive in nature so now so can class i'm otherwise uh, just bit you can say talking about our life uh, related to this context that we people when we are reading literature out of literature it is not of course only a work of a work of imagination of a person when a person writes a story when a person writes any poem it means somehow that poem or that work of literature is always associated with the experience of a person so what the thing is we must learn from the experiences of others just make a make a hint or make a you can say make a line in your book my take away from this chapter okay what you have learned and ultimately make that make that take away one of the you can say principle of your life okay so from this chapter our take away is that book should not be judged by its cover and appearances are always deceptive in nature make this principle and apply it in your life this is what actually life is okay it means life is of course too short to learn from your own experiences okay so try to learn from the experiences of other person so this we are going to you can say learn from each and every piece of literature we read so next afterwards first question is who are the characters in this poem list them so we have read that what are the characters in this poem the various characters in this poem are little black kitten whose name was who was gray mouse oh, sorry one was little black kitten the gray mouse belinda who owns all these pets and a yellow dog who was called as mustard and she has a small pet dragon which was card in nature but of course it was not why did custard cry for a nice safe cage and why is the dragon called cowardly dragon why so because custard is always not you can say participating in the fun activities of the others so whenever other animals are playing he is always finding a safer place to live not participating in any of the fun filled activities uh, being uh, you can say being participated by other animals or the pets of belinda and moreover belinda also tried to tickle him in order to make him happy but he is always behaving in the same manner and this is the reason why it was always called as cowardly in nature okay next third question belinda tickled him she tickled him merciful why because he is not participating in any kind of activity he is not at all so happy like that of other creatures like that of other animals in the house they are always you can say playing they are always cracking some jokes but ultimately what is happening uh, custard was not at all participating in all this he was always finding a safer place to live and living in a separate place not particip without participating in any of the activities right next any doubt here i hope that it is clear next the poet has employed many poetic devices for example clashed his tail like iron in a dungeon poetic devices simile can you list some other poetic devices this we have already discussed that what are the poetic devices used in this poem are so what are the poetic devices used in this poem this we have already discussed okay so you can have it written on your book only next is can you find out the rhyme scheme of the two or three stanzas rhyme scheme i discussed with you yesterday also before starting the poem that in each and every paragraph there is a a and b b suppose pick up any first suppose let us pick first stanza first is house a gray mouse again rhyming a a then wagon and dragon rhyming with each other so it is b b so the rhyme scheme is a a b b okay now next is writers use words to give us a picture of or image without actually saying what they mean can you trace some images in the poem yes of course this onomatopoeia is of course an example of this imagery used here okay 
so no need to write down here next do you find tale of custard dragon to be serious or light hearted poem of course it's not so serious of course but it holds a serious theme okay it is light hum it is you can say light hearted poem as it is describing uh, the great lesson of life but in a very light hearted in a humorous way that how the other creatures who seem to be very agile who seem to be very funny who seem to be very active and ultimately how they behaved in the end in the end how they behaved that they ultimately submerged to their safer places when the pirate attacked the house okay so ultimately it was the cowed cowardly dragon who was thought to be very you can say cowed in nature and not at all tried for any kind of you can say any kind of difficult situation and it was ultimately he only who has saved belinda okay so of course it's a light hearted poem but of course delivering a very lofty uh, theme as well as you can say lofty theme as well as lofty you can say lesson in the end so this poem is a ballad tells us a story have you come across any such modern song or lyric that tells us a story this is just up to you in the previous class 9 you have read the poem uh, that um, now that in which that woodpecker the uh, lady was changed into a woodpecker uh, it was i'm not getting that name uh, you have read in class 9 or it was in your class 10 only it was not in class 10 it was night when the uh, saint peter comes to her house okay uh, for a, she asking for cake yes raghav what was the name of that poem legend of northland ha ah, yes legend of northland that was of course a ballad okay so this is all about this chapter okay so if i talk about some of the extra questions time is not permitting us we will talk about it tomorrow okay then afterwards we will have that short poem animals okay from this book of course and after this poem animals we are going to start with the next book so much of work on our part to do okay so that's all for today if you have any doubts you can ask me